If you have found overcoming the dragon ministry to be a source of strength and help to your spiritual walk in these trying times, why not show your support today? Just $1 a month from each of our listeners will help with operating costs and keep us on the air. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you. Well, the Lord has said that He's sending the spirit of Elijah in these last days. Amen? Turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, children to the fathers. God is sending the spirit of Elijah. Now, <clears throat> Jesus said concerning John the Baptist, the spirit of Elijah has already come, or Elijah has already come. Amen? Now, <clears throat> John the Baptist being filled with the Holy Ghost, this was the spirit of Elijah, because the spirit of Elijah is the Holy Ghost. And when they asked John who he was, John said, I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Amen. I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. They asked John, they said, John, are you the Christ? He says, no. In fact, John said, I'm not even worthy to loose the shoes. Never mind take the shoes off his feet. Never mind wash his feet as a servant would standing at the door. Amen. When someone came to visit at someone's home. John says, I'm not even worthy to unloose his shoes. In other words, I'm not really worthy to even serve him. I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. John did not come dressed in fine apparel, gorgeous robes. He was dressed in camel's hair. He ate wild locusts and honey. If you was to look at John back then when he was out there preaching, heralding the message to repent, rebuking the Pharisees who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, looking at him from the perspective of a human being, you probably would have looked at John and said, he must be from another world. He doesn't look like he fits in. Something different about him. Amen. Look at him. He's poor. He doesn't have anything. Look at him. Look what he's dressed in. But yet when Jesus came, nobody recognized him except John. And John recognized him by the Spirit. He said, I saw the Spirit like a dove resting, lighting down upon him. And John began to proclaim to those around him, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. John didn't know that, but by the Spirit. Because when John's head was about to be cut off, he said, Go see if it's really him. What do you mean, John? I thought you knew that he was the Son of God. I thought you knew he was the Lamb of God. By the Spirit he knew. Are you listening, people? By the Spirit, John knew. John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the day of his birth. Nobody had been filled with the Holy Ghost from their birth like John. Are you listening? He was the forerunner for Jesus. John was the one that said, 
I'm not the Christ, when he was asked. He says, I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Amen. Make his path straight. The king is coming. And when Jesus came, even as an infant, Herod was afraid of him, how he was going to take his place, the prophecy being fulfilled. He wanted every single firstborn killed. He didn't want anyone taking his place. Are you listening? Jesus always takes first place, and there are those today that don't want him to take first place. He always takes the preeminence because he is the preeminence. How many know that Jesus Christ is not just a man? He's the God-man. Amen? He's the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen? He's not a star man. He didn't come down from space out of a star, as they would like you to believe today. No, that star simply marked his where he was uh, born where he was laid. Doesn't matter what time of the year he was born. They try to get caught up in that too. What matters is that he was born. Praise God, the devil doesn't want you to believe that. That Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, was born of a virgin. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, born, born of a virgin. She had never known a man. Never had she been with a man. She said, how can this be? How is it possible to the angel? How? How can I give birth? I've never been with a man. I've never known a man. The angel said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And that which shall be conceived in you shall be of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mary said, let it be. Even as you said, let it be. She surrendered to the word. Amen. All my listeners that are out there right now, if I could just get you to surrender to the word, if I could just get you to surrender to the gospel that's being preached to you right now, just surrender. Surrender all. Amen. Hallelujah. She surrendered to the word. That which shall be conceived in you shall be of the Holy Ghost. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen? And when John saw the Word coming to him to be baptized, he said, No, 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 no. I have need to be baptized of you. And the Word, the Christ of God, the son of the living God, said to John, the one that said he's not even worthy to unloose his shoes, that was dressed in camel's hair, that everybody looked down upon, everybody thought he was poor, Everything, everybody thought he was contemptible, said to John, suffer it, suffer it, John. Go ahead, John, I'm going to let you do it. To fulfill all righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. When Jesus came up out of that water, no, John didn't just sprinkle a little water on his head. He baptized him under the water. Amen. Just a little sprinkle of water on your head's not enough. Get under there. Amen. It's not the water that saves you. It's not the water that cleanses you. Jesus didn't need cleansing. Listen, people. When he come up out of that water, the Spirit of God lighted down upon him and remained on him. Are you listening? Hallelujah. All the people around didn't see it. 
John did. I remember at my pastor's funeral, as they were, his casket was there and they were lowering it into the ground. I saw the Spirit of God lighting upon that casket like a dove. Nobody else saw it. It wasn't for everybody to see. It was what God wanted me to see. And I thought about that. My pastor that's died in the physical. Are you listening? The Spirit of God descended like a dove. It wasn't a dove. Not a physical dove. It wasn't a bird. It was the Spirit of God like a dove. Gentle. Are you listening? Beautiful. Lighted down upon the Son of God. And here my pastor is in a, in, a, in a casket. And the Spirit of God lights upon him like a dove. What does that tell us? If the Spirit of God lighted down and remained upon Jesus, when Jesus was getting ready to go into his ministry, that tells us that Jesus was already dead to the physical. My pastor had to die and be in a casket for that to take place. But let me ask you, did he really have to be put in a casket for that to take place? Or did he hinder God from doing all that he would have done in his life? Are you listening to me, people? If you won't God, take God at his word, God's not going to force himself. I saw the Spirit of God light down upon my pastor's casket. John saw the Spirit of God light down upon Jesus. Jesus was still walking around with his physical body. My pastor was in a grave. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? We got to die, people, to that flesh. We've got to die to the flesh. There's got to be a crucifixion of the flesh. There's got to be a death to the self-life. If we're going to be walking in the power of God, if we're going to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, if we're going to be his bride, there's got to be a death to the self-life. Hallelujah. The scripture says that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he returned in the power of the Spirit. One place it says he was led of the Spirit. Another place says he was driven. Sometimes the Spirit will drive you. Hallelujah, I thank God he does. Because there's a lot of times I don't want to go in the direction God wants me to go in. But I thank God in his gentleness and how he'll be willing to drive me. Hallelujah. Praise the living God, brothers and sisters. Our God is good. Amen. Whether he's leading us or driving us, praise God, he's in control and we can put our trust in him. Hallelujah. God will never do you wrong. The Lord will never do you wrong. He'll always do you good. But the Lord knows what we need. Sometimes we need a, to be driven. Sometimes we need to be led. Amen. Sometimes when I preach the gospel to you folks, sometimes you may feel driven. Sometimes you may feel the force of the, the message. But sometimes you feel being just being led. God is gently leading his dear children along. Amen. But there's times that we need to be driven. Amen. Praise God. But just remember this, God's not driving you off. Amen. To be slaughtered. The Lord is driving you in the direction you must go. I remember one morning the Lord woke me up and he said, I had to take you this way. It was almost like Jesus was apologizing to me, but I knew he wasn't because the Lord wouldn't apologize to me. But just his words, the way he spoke to me, the compassion in his voice when he said, I had to take you this way. Amen. 
I had to take you this way. Job learned the truth when he said, he knows the, t- the path that I take. He knows the way I take. Amen. When he's tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Some of you out there listening to me right now, if not all of you, are going through struggles. You're going through hard places. You're going through the fire. But remember, he knows the way you take. Hallelujah. And when he has tried you, you shall come forth as gold. That fire's for a purpose. That fire's for a reason. God is perfecting you. God is changing you. God is transforming you to make you like the word so that you can be like the rock, so that you can be like Jesus, so you can be like our great example of what a real man is, a real servant, amen, a real minister, a real man, a real person. Make no mistake about it, Jesus was real. Amen, he was real. Hallelujah. He was so real that most of the time the disciples were were totally, completely, always nervous around him. All the time, nervous. Why are you nervous, John? Why are you nervous? They didn't walk with Jesus, people, like you might think, just cutting up and joking and going along. No, that's the devil. That's the devil. He wants you to think that's that's the Christ. He wants you to think that no, that's the Antichrist. These pictures of Jesus painted with these big smiles and big listen, he's God in the flesh. Amen. And when he walked among men, when he walked among men, he's the good shepherd that John, that David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And he was walking with John and he was walking with Peter and he was walking with the apostles. And listen, he was walking with them. Praise God, the son of God. When he sat on the mountain and he taught them, that was the great shepherd, the good shepherd that David spoke of. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. You walk with Jesus, you won't have to be worried about the bread and the fishes and plenty. Always plenty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Always plenty when you're walking with Him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Make the people to lie down or to sit down in the green grass. And then he took the fishes and the loaves and he blessed them and he broke them and he gave them to eat. I shall not want. Amen. He's the son of God. He's the great I am. He's the master of everything. He's the master of the wind. Hallelujah. When he was out there on the the boat with the disciples, praise the Lord. And he was down there taking a nap because, you know, the disciples keep him up all night talking to him. Won't let him get any rest. So he's got to take rest when he can get it. And he's trying to give his natural body some rest. And a storm breaks out. Well, he already knew the storm was coming before he laid his head down. He knew it was on its way. But did that stop Jesus from laying his head down and going to sleep, taking a nap? But was Jesus out of sorts when they went down there and shook him and said, hey, wake up, we're all going to die. No, Jesus simply got up and he said, oh, you have little faith. (laughs) Where's your faith? That's what Jesus is saying to his people right now. You've been saved for over 10 years. Where's your faith? You've been serving me for over 20 years now. Where's your faith? Oh, ye of little faith, where is your faith, Jesus says. I gave you something. I deposited something in you. I've been giving you and depositing in you faith. Where is it? Are you going to start using it? Are you going to start applying it? Are you going to start speaking my word in truth and start speaking to mountains and the things in your life? Are you going to start walking and living in faith? Where is your faith? Doesn't the scripture say to let God sleep? Don't awaken. Don't awaken. Don't awaken him. 
Don't wake up the wrath of God. Don't waken the anger of God. Where is your faith? When Jesus comes, will he find faith on the earth? Do you really want the Lord to be angry with you? Do you really want the Lord to look upon you with rebuke? And he says to you, where is your faith? Hallelujah. The Lord wants us to grow. He wants us to develop. He wants us to stop saying that he is just a little God. That he can't handle my problem. He can't handle my situation. The Lord is angry right now with those that are running to doctors and hospitals instead of going to him for their healing. That's right. That makes God angry when we turn to doctors. Now, when I speak of God, I'm talking about the Father. But remember, the Father doesn't know about weakness. Jesus was touched by our infirmities. He has compassion on us. But the Father is angry. That makes him angry because he knows that he's all we need. He knows he is our healing. He knows he's our all in all. He's everything we need. And that makes God angry. But Jesus, because he's been touched by our infirmities, by our weaknesses, he has compassion on you and I. And so when we decide to go to a hospital or go to a doctor, the Lord suffers it. The Lord allows it. But it's only to your own confusion. How come we don't go to Jesus anymore for our bodies? How come we let society dictate to us and tell us that Jesus doesn't heal anymore? How come we don't go to Jesus anymore, brothers and sisters, when we have a problem? Why do we have those calling themselves Christians today running to psychologists, running to psychiatrists, running to the pills? Take pills to go to sleep, take pills to wake up, take pills to get through the day. And the only thing you need to take is the gospel. How come we don't go to Jesus anymore for healing? People, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Yeah, we want to go wake up Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you to believe for me again. Why do you need Jesus to believe for you? He's given you faith. He gave you a measure of faith. Why is it that we don't want to appropriate or to do what we know to do? Why are we afraid to operate in faith? You know why? Because we don't believe. I believe, but help my unbelief. We don't fully believe. And there's a mixture. There's a mixture of unbelief and doubt with our faith. And that's why we hesitate. And so God is taking us through the fire. He's taking us through the trials. He's taking us the, these difficult places, these difficult ways. He's taking us through these places to perfect us, to purify us, to get all those impurities out so that we have only faith. Amen. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, when I, I've prayed for you. And when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. Did, what did Jesus say to Peter? He said, I've prayed for you that your faith does not fail. That your faith does not fail. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The just shall live by faith, walk by faith. Are you listening? Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Are you listening? The more truth that you have in your life, the more people around you are going to get nervous. They're going to start pointing their fingers at you and saying that you're accusing them. Amen? Because the light is shining out of you. 
and they're being exposed. And instead of dealing with their own heart and admitting what's in their own heart, they want to point their finger back at you in accusation and they want to say, you're the troublemaker. You're the problem. Away with him. Crucify him. Get rid of him. That's the cry of the mob today. That's the cry of all today saying, away with him. Even the Jews today that rejected him back then would reject him today. Away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. Well, the world rejects us. Jesus said, love them. (coughs) Love your enemies. Amen. Don't be distracted by what the world is doing. Continue to grow in love and in truth. Amen. To be like Jesus. God bless you.